Uh, links are really the lifeblood of the internet. Uh, obviously, links connect people from one site to another. It facilitates effectively the free flow of information and therefore freedom of expression. And we have never seen in anywhere else in the world an attempt to regulate the free flow of information by putting into scope effectively a toll for links. Creator of the internet has concerns of Bill C-18 as this could break the internet. We have never seen a law like this anywhere else in the world. Limiting usefulness of links would have serious effects of freedom of expression. Rachel Thomas questions Facebook witness on the devastating Bill C-18. Here's the clip. Um, I will direct my first question here to Mr. Chan at Meta. Um, Mr. Chan, in your opening remarks, you talked about the open internet and how it allows for competition to thrive. Um, however, you made reference to the fact that this legislation would actually harm that. In fact, the creator of the internet, um, Sir Tim Berners-Lee, has also said the same thing. When Australia came out with its legislation, he said that it threatened the intent of the internet to be an open and broad space where people could collaborate and share ideas freely. Um, I'm hoping that perhaps you could expand on this. How does this legislation harm the internet or break it, as some have claimed? Um, th th thank you very much, ma'am, for a, a very, um, a very, very good question. I mean, I, I think this is really at the heart of what preoccupies a lot of people beyond, I think, just the platforms. I mean, simply put. Uh, links are really the lifeblood of the internet. Uh, obviously, links connect people from one site to another. It facilitates effectively the free flow of information and therefore freedom of expression. And we have never seen in anywhere else in the world an attempt to regulate the free flow of information by putting into scope effectively a toll for links. Um, that is wholly unprecedented globally. Um, it runs counter to any notion of what a link is and, you know, and, and, and how it operates. And I would just also say it runs counter to um, decision made by the Supreme Court of Canada back in 2011. And I'll just quote a segment of it here. I printed it out earlier, if I may, ma'am. It says, the Internet cannot, in short, provide access to information without hyperlinks, limiting their usefulness would have the effect of seriously restricting the flow of information and as a result, freedom of expression. <laughs> Ms. Thomas, you, I think your question has been answered. Do you have another question? Yes, thank you. I apologize. My internet is unstable, and so I am cutting in and out a little bit. My apologies. Um, my, my next question here um, will go to Matt at Open Media. Um, Matt, you talked about the fact that Canadians do need high-quality news sources, and you said that there's a great deal of variety that is required in order to maintain a democratic system that is healthy. Um, but you almost so, also made a comment that Bill C-11 actually doesn't accomplish this stated intent. In fact, um, you seem to indicate that it would harm innovation and creativity and variety among news sources. Do you care to expand on why that's the case? Yeah, that's right. And I'm going to springboard a bit off, off of what Kevin was just saying here. So under this bill, we're attaching a cost to, this, to good information while leaving bad information free to spread um, without any cost. Uh, and the belief is that that will somehow lead to good information spreading more and faster. Does that seem right to you? I mean, we didn't need to be costing uh, good journalism in this way. We could have found money for it without attaching this cost. Um, and unfortunately, the decision of the drafters of C-18 has, has been to do this. In terms of concerns about the spread of bad information here, um, it's incentivizing, incentivizing existing outlets to produce more lower quality content. But it, because of how low the standards are in C-18 for recognizing um, quality information and quality information outlets, uh, it's actually open, opening huge doors for a whole range of bad actors to enter Canada and to start spreading their misinformation. So we're talking about clickbait farms, you know, the doctors can't believe this type people might take huge advantage of this legislation. Um, and we're even talking about hostile foreign actors, um, groups like RT, but there's many more who might have a real interest in misleading Canadians and find a way of misusing this legislation to do so. Thank you, Matt. 
Um, I, I guess I'm just hoping that perhaps you can expand on this a little bit more. I, I understand with the, the cost of links that that will perhaps change the variety that's available. But in addition to that, um, what about in terms of the qualification? Like, what about in terms of news sources actually being able to qualify? Will that enhance the amount of variety that is available online and ethnic media sources and smaller sources being able to, you know, keep their share of the market? Or, or will it, in fact, harm that? Yeah, that's also a concern. So we're letting some bad actors in and we're also freezing out newer, uh, smaller businesses and more innovative businesses um, because funding is being allocated relative to the current distribution on on uh, platforms. It means that the platforms that are doing best today are the platforms that are getting most of this money. Um, there's not sort of a, a way of of getting these funds to to spur new models that might actually succeed without the support for journalism. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hockfield. Um Mr. Chan, I, I'm curious to know, um, you know, it's, it's been said that there's a disruption in the market in terms of advertising revenues. Um, certainly, it's shifting online versus, you know, paper media. And so, you know, I guess I'm just wondering then, like, this whole bill is based on this premise that we need to somehow, you know, take take lost ad revenue or make up for lost ad revenue in order to keep some new sources afloat um, or at least seconds. enhance that. I, I'm curious as to what, you know, Meta's take is on this. You have 30 seconds, a little less than that, Mr. Chan, to answer. You're muted. Please unmute. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I, I guess I would simply say that as recent events have shown, um, nobody is immune from the market forces, the very significant competitive market forces in the advertising industry. We are no different. Um, but it would be false to claim that this started um, because of digital platforms like Facebook. I think if you go back into the history of reporting on this, uh, it goes back to the early 2000s, um, long before we existed and long before we monetized. Thank you very much. I think the time is up.